Hello students, this is Miss Dalton and today's video is on domain and range notations. There are three types of notations that you're going to learn in Algebra 2. The first one being inequality notation. Now I've put this cheat sheet down here that will help you decide whether or not you need a less than or a less than or equal to. Um, basically if you have um, a, a, an arrow on the end or if you have an open circle then you're only going to use the less than or the greater than. But if you have a solid point at the beginning or the end, you're going to use a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to. So I'm just going to write down just some generic um, instructions on how to do this, and then you'll see more of this when you come to class. But for inequality notation, you're basically going to start, and, and if you're doing domain, you're going to have the x variable, if you're doing range, you're gonna do the Y variable, but I'm just gonna write it at, like you're doing domain. So you're gonna start with this piece in the middle. This, the middle piece is gonna be a less than X less than. And so one thing that you will do is you will always use less than when you're surrounding the X. So this would be like a between statement. If you have a beginning and you have an end, then you will have this between statement. On the left side, you will obviously put the smallest x value that you have. And then on the right side, you will put the largest value that you have. Okay. So again, this is when you have a between statement, when you have a beginning and an end. If you have an arrow on one end, um, then you would just use one less than or greater than um, or less than or greater than or equal to. And you'll see more of that when we talk about that in class. Okay, the next um, type of notation that you have is called set notation. And really, it's just a fancy way of writing inequality notation. You'll see this more when you get into the um, upper level math classes. And so we're starting to introduce that to you right now in Algebra 2. Um, what you have is, I call this the stuff. You have the stuff at the beginning, and this is just, um, again, it's fancy notation, fancy mathematical notation, and it's just something that you're going to have to remember when you write it in set notation. Um, you have this x value. Again, if you're using range, then you would put y value. You have a vertical line, and then you would put x is an element, so it's this fancy E. It's like a C with a line in the middle. And then you put the fancy R that stands for real numbers. So the fancy R, I call it the double bar R. It's got two bars on the left side and then you make an R out of it. Okay, so I call this the stuff. So you're gonna put this stuff at the beginning and then you put a comma and then you'll continue with your inequality notation. So then you'll take this and you'll put it in place right here. And then you'll end with just the fancy uh, curly parentheses. So again, um, set notation is just a more mathematical way of writing it. Uh, and so how you would read this is this says, um, hang on, let me get this out. So how you would read this is you say, x such that x is an element of all real numbers such that you know x is between the two the smallest and the largest value and so that's how you would read that and then the last notation that we have is called interval notation and that tends to be the most popular it's my favorite it's the easiest one to write it oftentimes looks like an ordered pair. So <clears throat> if you have a less than or a greater than, <coughs> excuse me, you would use uh, parentheses and you'll have the small number that comes first and then you'll have the large number. So again, if you have parentheses, on the beginning and the end, it is going to look like an ordered pair. It's going to look like something that you're used to seeing um, just when you're graphing an ordered pair. But you can also do brackets. So I could have a bracket on one side 
and maybe a parenthesis on the right side. And this is where this comes into play. You will always use parentheses if it goes on forever or if you have an open circle, but you will also use, um, you will use brackets if um, it has a, a closed point. Alright, so let's look at an example. In this example, we're going to state the domain of the graph um, in the three notations that we just looked at. So we're going to look at inequality notation first. And since we're doing the domain, we need to point out that this is just your x values. So if I look at the left side of my graph and I bring it down to the x-axis, it would have a solid point right there at negative 4. Okay? And, it, and then if I follow it along over to the right side, you can see that on the right side we have an arrow. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and write that on the x-axis. Um, I feel like this kind of helps write the um, inequality a little bit easier. It, it basically is saying that all of these points have x values going all the way on forever to the right side. Okay, so we need to write this example, this number line example, as an inequality. Well, it's everything to the right of negative 4. Well, if, you, if you're going to the right, are the numbers getting larger or are they getting smaller? They're actually getting larger. So you're going to write that it's all of the x values that are greater than negative 4. Then you have to decide, is it greater than or is it greater than or equal to? Well, because there is a solid point right there, then it's going to be greater than or equal to. And that's going to be your inequality notation. Now remember, set notation is just adding that stuff at the beginning. So we're going to put uh, the fancy parentheses, and we're going to write it, because we are talking about domain, we're going to still use the letter x. So we have x such that x is an element of all real numbers, comma, and then you have to just rewrite your inequality notation. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And then close it off with the curly parentheses. Interval is going to be, again, the easiest one. For interval notation, you just look at the smallest value. Well, the smallest value is negative 4. And at negative 4, I have a solid point, so that's going to be a bracket. And then on the right side of my graph, it goes on forever. Now, what value could we use that goes on forever? Well, it's going to be a positive infinity. If it's moving uh, to the right, it would be a positive infinity. If it has an arrow on the left side, then that would be a negative infinity. Well, it's on the right, so we're going to use positive infinity. And with infinity, you always use parentheses. And so there is what you have for interval notation. Our last example, we're going to look at the range. So for the range, we're looking at the y values. So I like to think of this as from the bottom up to the top. So at the bottom of my graph, you can see that I have a point right here, which would be at negative 1. Okay? And then at the top of my graph, again, it doesn't matter that it's doing this crazy thing in between here. We're just looking at that top value. Well, the top value is right here, which it appears to be at positive 7. Okay? So this is a between statement because we have all the values being included from negative 1 up to 7. Okay, we've got all of these points right here that have those y values. Okay, so let's write the inequality. So in, in inequality, it is going to be a between statement because we have a bottom and we have a top um, boundary. So we're going to put less than, and since we're talking about range, we're going to put the variable y less than. At the bottom of my graph, this is a solid point. 
And so that is going to be negative 1. Remember, you always start with the lowest value, which would be at the bottom. And since it is a solid point, then I'm going to have to put a line under the less than symbol. And then up at the top, this is an open circle. So an open circle is just going to be the less than symbol, and then we just have to put the 7 after it. Okay, now let's write our set notation. Set notation is easy after we've written the inequality. We put the curly parentheses. This time we're going to use the variable y because we're talking about range. So we have y such that y is an element of all real numbers where y is between negative 1 and 7. So again, that's how you would say it. Don't worry about, you know, getting embarrassed about saying that and make sure that you're saying it right. It's going to take some time, but you will learn how to say that correctly um, and like a mathematician. Interval notation, we're looking at the smallest number. The smallest number is negative 1. The highest number is 7, and now we just need to fill in whether they're brackets or parentheses. Well, the negative 1 is a solid point, so that is going to be a bracket and seven is an open circle or an open point, so we're going to have a parenthesis. All right, that's all I've got for you on this video. Again, we're gonna do lots of examples with this in class, so please make sure your notes are filled out and come to class ready to work.